exercise four. In this exercise, we're going to take a look at NX's capabilities with sweeps. Uh, we're going to use a sweep surface to create the spokes that you see here on that wheel. We're going to use the revolve feature and just some sketch tools to generate the model that you see here. And then some filling in. So let's begin. Start off with a new part file. Go ahead and name it capital E4. In this case, I'm going to call it E4D. Hit OK. Begin your sketch by clicking on the sketch tool, and you could go ahead and select the X Z plane. And hit OK. Now we're going to take the rectangle tool, and at the origin, oh, and also make sure here that you have a two point rectangle. Click and drag out your rectangle and the width will be one inch and the length will be three inches high. Or I should say the height. And then just click to complete that. Hit escape when you're done. Let's drag these dimensions out. Okay. I'm going to just zoom up with my scroll on my mouse, my middle mouse button scroll. And now we're going to take a look at adding the chamfer. Down below here you'll find the chamfer tool. And on the left you can make it a symmetric. We'll make it a 0.25 symmetric. Click on the corner, drag it out, click to get until you get 0.25 there. And hit close. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the arc tools here and we're going to go with the arc by three points. Click somewhere on this line. Be careful not to get the midpoint. That's the midpoint there. Maybe I'll make it a little bit below the midpoint. Click and drag it up. Click again and drag to the left. And the radius is going to be 0.5. Okay, we have a variety of dimensions that are appearing here, so we can go ahead and modify these then. So 0.5, and then um, in this case we want it to be offset by a couple dimensions. Let's go to print, and you can see here it's going to be 1.75 to the bottom. So we'll go to the dimension tool. Select the bottom edge to the center point. Make that 1.75. The next dimension is going to be, uh, it's actually going to be 0.25 from the center point to the edge. So click on the center point to this left edge. And just make that 0.25. In this case, we just want to make sure that these are touching this edge. So we could actually grab them and drag them over to the edge. Okay, and for this, we're going to go ahead and trim this out now. So go to the Trim tool, and you could uh, just click and drag through to trim that geometry out. Some of the things have changed here. Um, we have this 35 degrees, and that's actually what we want it to be at. So I'm just going to double click on it. If this is at 0.75, that, that's fine. Just click on it to hit add dirt to complete the dimensions. All right, now we could go ahead and revolve this. So if we go to the little arrow to the right of the extrude tool, you'll find revolve. And from here, it selected our geometry. And then we have the ability to specify, in this case we'll specify by two points. So click on the bottom point and the top point, and it should revolve 360 degrees. If you want to take a closer look at it, you could just rotate with your middle mouse button. And if you want to get rid of this to hide it, just right click on it and find hide below it. Okay. Now we want to make one of the spokes. So to make the spoke, we're going to go ahead and click on the sketch tool again. And we'll go ahead 
ahead and click on the C plane. And hit OK. Alright, for the spoke, we'll take the line tool and line ourselves up off the origin. So it looks like we're centered here. Click, drag out a two inch line. And we can change these dimensions. If we hit escape here, this is going to be 1.75 off the bottom edge. And this is just 2. All right. At this point, we'll just leave that one there alone. We'll go to the arc tools. And the arc method will stick with three point. Click on this bottom line here, the vertex. Drag it out at a bit of an angle. Click. And then when you see the little tangent arc appear, that's perfect. Go ahead and just click to select it. Do the same on this one. Click and drag this up at an angle. Drag it out until you can see the tangent symbol. So the little right there, that's that circle with the line on it. Click. And now I'll take the line tool and click on that vertex. And if you follow that tangent, Geometry, that little um, symbol, the relationship, click, and then hit escape. Now we're going to go ahead and add our own constraint here. So we'll go to geometric constraints. We're going to select the horizontal and select this line. Another thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll go with equal and make both of these arcs. Oops. We'll make both those arcs equal, so make sure you click on the first one here. Unfortunately, it's not going here. That's all right. We'll go ahead and just put the dimensions in. So it's going to be 0.75. And this is 0.75 as well. Oops. There we go. And we'll add some additional dimensions to constrain this. So if you go to the dimension tool, select end to end here. That's going to be 4. And then from this line to this line, it's going to be 1. All right, and we are. So at this point, we want to exit the sketch. So hit the little finish sketch tool there. Okay, now this is this going to be used for our sweep, but what we need to do is create what looks, it's going to look like a little tombstone at the end. So we need to create a plane that's perpendicular to that curve. So if we go to the datum plane tools, you'll see, if you hit this little arrow, find point and direction. All you have to do is select the end point, and it should create what we're looking for. Just hit OK. And now we have our plane at the end. Select it, and go to the sketch tool, and hit OK. It might be upside down, but that's, that's quite all right. We'll be able to work with this. And what we're going to do at this point is we're going to go to the Arc Tools. And this time, let's try a new type of arc, arc by Center and End Points. With this tool, you just glide up to the very end of this curve, click, and we'll click on Start Point there. And then we're going to drag it directly to the left, click, Now we can drag this around to this side, and once we get it to align, we get 180 points, and then that's the Just click on that. Okay, now we have our arc. Let's go ahead and complete it with some additional lines. Go to the line tool, lock into the vertex of the arc, drag it straight up, click and drag it across till you infer to the edge of the other arc there, and close it. Oops. Click on this as well. All right. Uh, hit Escape and let's drag these dimensions out. This is going to be 0.5, and the radius is going to be 0 0.25. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and we can sweep this. So let's go to Sweep. Now, if you don't see the Sweep tool here, you just have to right-click in this gray area up here. 
and you're going to find surfaces and check that little box and it should come up and you'll find swept. Now for the swept it automatically we had our curve already selected so we're good there. Now under here we need the guide curves to click on this, on this little button here and I'll just select that blue guide curve and you should start seeing a preview. Some of the settings that you need to have on First of all, preserve shape. If that's not turned on, it's going to be difficult to fill at these edges. So make sure preserve shape is checked. Notice along these options that I've selected, fixed, constant, fit, scaling. Body type is a solid. You can make it to a sheet, but not in this case. We don't want a sheet. And that's pretty much it. Go ahead and hit OK. Now we're going to go ahead and unite this. So go to the Unite tool. And we'll select the main hub and then select this spoke. Now you have some options here. We're going to stick with feature bodies. Okay. And hit OK. All right, now that they're merged, we can actually hide this. Just right click, hide. And then on the edge, right click, hide again. We're going to go ahead and put some fillets in on here. So go to the edge blend and first set to 0.188 and select these two edges. Now if you are not able to select those two edges, that's an indication that you missed a little checkbox on the sweep and you could go back and right click on the sweep and there was a preserve edge. That edge is I think that's the name of it. Hit apply, change it to 0.25 now and select this edge and that bottom edge and hit OK. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and make a pattern here. So go to Feature Pattern and make sure that we select the features. You just click on the spoke and also make sure you click on the fillets too. The edge blend and this blend there. Okay, don't select the center. We don't need to replicate that. Okay, we want this set to circular and then the specify by two points. Now what you can do here is you can select this edge and then this edge. And you'll start seeing four little instances. Maybe four. It depends on if you have count and pitch selected. The count we're going to make four and pitch angle is 90. Now let's say though that we wanted instead maybe 3. And in this case, the pitch angle, what we can do is we could put a formula in there. And we could say, okay, we want 360 degrees divided by, in this case, 3. Hit OK. And it automatically does a calculation for us. Go ahead and hit OK. Apparently I must have missed the, the blends in there. Oh, I, uh, yeah, because what happened is it actually doesn't merge or unite, so we have to put those blends in again. So if we go to Unite, we could go ahead and select the body, and then um, select the two additional bodies, feature. Okay. Let's go back to the fillet tool, or the rounds tool, I should say, or edge blend. Get my Pro Engineer Creo and SolidWorks and Inventor mixed up there, so my apologies. All right. So now that we have those spokes ready, let's go ahead and complete this. So let's um, go back to Sketch, and you can select the X uh, XC plane. Is it okay. And we're going to go ahead and draw a little circle at the end here. Let's find the midpoint, drag out a circle, and it should be one inch. Escape, double click on that, make it one inch in diameter. And now we're going to revolve that. So click on revolve. Again, set it to two points. So just like this edge, this top edge. Oops, uh, let me 
the Inkscape there. Um, and then click on this button for two points. Just select the edges. And there we go, 360 degrees, hit OK. You can hide this feature. We're going to need to unite the bodies. Keep it with the feature body. Hit OK. And let's go back to the edge blend, 0.25, and put in those last blends. Hit OK. And that concludes exercise four.